from the station that's on your side. Winner of the Evening Newscast Emmy Award. This is Channel 7 News at 10. Well, according to the March of Dimes, one in 10 babies are born too early. It's something we know happens, but unless it's happened to you, it's hard to understand. Well, our Erin Holly has lived this and joins us to share her story and the story of other NICU families. That 1 in 10 statistic works out to 15 million babies born prematurely each year. Last year, two of them were mine. The first time I saw my children, Charlotte and Graham, was in pictures. They were in the neonatal intensive care unit, the NICU. It is all in God's hands, and it would absolutely mean the world to me if you would say a prayer for these babies. You may have followed my story on social media. I was hospitalized when my twins were 30 weeks along, and they were born two weeks later, two months too soon. Full term for a baby is considered 40 weeks. Anything less than 37 is considered premature. Jane Swatty entered the world at Baptist Hospital in Little Rock at 27 weeks after her mom Rachel went into preterm labor with unexplained bleeding. She was tiny and adorable and perfect. She weighed two pounds, five ounces. As a Nikki mom, you're just terrified. I mean, it's unbelievably scary. I mean, you just, you can't imagine it. A few miles away at UAMS, a different baby, but the same emotions. Kylie Oates was 23 weeks pregnant when her amniotic fluid sac ruptured. Five days later, Maylee was born, weighing just one pound, three ounces, almost half the size of Rachel's daughter, Jane. Both girls, much too small. That's the really tough part, yeah, is that um, for people to gasp when they see your child, that's hard. To see someone go, oh, and that's my baby. Maylee's dad, Jacob, says she was on a ventilator, her eyes still fused shut, her tiny body fighting for each minute. We have watched Maylee grow outside of my womb instead of inside of me. She was born November 20th. Yesterday, March 10th, was Maylee's due date. It's just hard. This whole thing is just hard. And again, it is not how you expect to become a mom. This isn't how I imagined bringing a child into the world. So, yeah. You know, missing a whole trimester of a pregnancy, you feel grief for losing that. And then you're looking to the future and you know that there may be more grief coming, that you may have two days with your baby, you may have 10 days with your baby. And if in all those moments, there's immense sadness and immense grief and, um, longing for things that you don't know that you'll ever have. <laughs> the reality is some babies don't go home. Every NICU parent lives in fear that at any moment their child's fight could be over. But mixed in with the grief and fear are moments of hope and profound joy. This is Rachel's first time holding Jane, almost two weeks after she was born. Maylee's first time to wear clothes, three months after she was born. And that's my daughter Charlotte, breathing on her own, the first time we saw her beautiful face without an oxygen tube. You know, you think about bringing home a baby when you're pregnant, and you think about... You think about... all the things you'll say and all the things that you'll do to help her. And then you're faced with this huge challenge of, of trying to find every good moment of a very scary thing. The Swatties NICU story has a happy ending. They were able to take Jane home after 95 days in the NICU. After 111 days, the Oates NICU story still has chapters left to unfold. She's a miracle. She is a miracle and she's strong. She's, a, she's going to be a force of nature. In the beginning, I would just stand there and just look at her and just cry and just, you know, tell her I loved her and that I knew she was gonna grow to be big and strong and I believed in her. And she's doing good. She's a miracle. All babies are miracles, but the smallest babies 
are the biggest miracles. Tomorrow night, we continue this story with a look at a piece of technology created right here in Little Rock that's helping NICU families stay close to their babies even when they can't be with them in the hospital. Don't miss tomorrow night's conclusion to this story that's close to my heart.